first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror. And off we go in week five on EA Sports. And the opening kickoff will not be returned as that will be a touchback. The Minnesota offense ready to go to work here. Their quarterback in his 10th season overall now and fourth is a Viking, Kirk Cousins. And this is a game for grit, determination, and somehow finding a way not to panic. What a horrible start for them. I mean, they haven't won a game yet. So now, as a quarterback, you're not just talking to your team. You've got to demonstrate to them what they need to do to win. He's got to be the leader by how he plays. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. Powering his way forward. And they work this well up field across the 45. And that's why Dalvin Cook is the Minnesota Vikings feature back. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. Second in the NFL last year in rushing with 1,557 yards. And that's now back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with 30 combined total touchdowns. What a player is Dalvin Cook. Now running on first down is Cook, but he didn't find much there. Call it a gain of three, second down. Now this defense for the Lions, they put together a strong effort last week in the win over Chicago. Yeah, what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. Meanwhile, Cousins throw complete to his receiver, Thielen. Touchdown, Vikings! Adam Thielen, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken at the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here comes the New York Lion offense here in 2021, led by their quarterback in his first season in Detroit after five in L.A., Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl, and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. That time the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what though, he can't hold them. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 11 carries, 96 yards, and a touchdown. And to me, the goal is the exact same thing as last week. Get him the ball early and often. I think he's got another big game in him in this one. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like even if he had opted to keep that, I don't think there was going to be much to gain. It seemed like it was perfectly defense. And know what they say, those guys on the other side, they get paid too. Now gone. 
catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rally to him. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. The NFC's Pro Bowl punter a year ago, Jack Fox, on to punt for the Lions. As he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. This is taken at about the 14. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say, when you run into big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think, ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine, Cousins, and complete right side to Cook. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but a guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. What's the plan of attack? You spend all week pumping up your defensive front. Your defensive tackles, your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys who go after the quarterback the most because you know that he's not going to run and beat you consistently throughout the game. You can rush more aggressively off the edge and even up the middle because even if he evades you, he's not going to go very far. You have a lot more confidence going after him in the pocket. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. To throw, Cousins. It's caught, Smith. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. To throw his Cousins. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. He bought it four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. This is brought in at the 21. So a good punt there, but a very strong 14-yard return. And the Lions will take over. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Williams going to get it again on second down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. And Xavier Woods with a pick. And the Vikings are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. So this is something we didn't see at all from this offense in the victory last week. That's a turnover. They didn't have any, but giving the ball away here in the opening quarter. I love the surprise in your voice because it's exactly what you stated. Didn't see it last week, but it's a key to their win. And it'll be a key to this game as well. Protecting the football. Didn't get it done there.
Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. And he winds up getting only a couple there down to the 29. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. A free safety rolling all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle. Complete Jefferson to target. They're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Oh. I usually see those guys out wide get called for holding on running plays here in Massimo. Yeah, sometimes you get this quick screen, bubble screen, anything where they're having to block for their fellow receiver, usually at the point of attack, and this time he got caught. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Just shy of the crossbar, and this score will stay right where it is. So out now come the Lions. The result's not great thus far. A punt on the first drive and an interception last time out. Now let's face it, every team wants to come out on the field and play with some confidence, play with some tempo, play with some rhythm. And when you're making those types of mistakes, you're not getting any of that put together. So what do you say, time to get back to the basics for them? In a lot of ways, yes. But the biggest one, of course, is finding people who will take care of the football and make a few plays. You've got to have a drive now that calms down the entire team. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. T.J. Hawkinson came into the NFL with big expectations. His big strides, they came in year two when his receptions jumped from 32 as a rookie to 67 last year. They expect those numbers to continue to go up, and they will when he continues to make catches like that. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Viking 16. First and 10, it's Swift. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. The Lions need to move. They're hustling to the line now. Right back to Swift again on second down. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the 5 at the 6. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, that's almost a tendency breaker. A chance now to get even before the break. 
fake as they come up first and goal. Forced out to his left. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. DJ Waddle just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. The first down went the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line here, second and goal. They'll fake the handoff. Now gone. Flushed out right. Well, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go around. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. On now is Seibert for the Lion field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Seibert's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they set up for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with a 7-3 lead, we'll see how aggressive they want to be. Cousins on first down. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. That'll bring up second down. From the gun, here's Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Second down, Cousins, and the Lions pressure too strong, down he goes. Aline McNeil in there to drop him, and that will go in the books as the first sack of his young NFL career. Congratulations, young man. Third down, down the court, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. There'll be Lions football to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. This taken in at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. offense ready to kick off their next drive and they do trail but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it and that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game no but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline here's second and nine just a yard on that last run 
play fake and it's gone. To the right side, complete to Miller. That'll go for a gain of seven. And just like that, it's third down. It's pretty easy to overlook the fullback when you're making your assignments defensively in the pass coverage game. But in this case, they made them pay for that oversight and picks up a nice gain. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Now gone. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 32-yard line. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team. So they called it a 
touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point by Seibert, up and good, and the lead is now 10-7. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. It's the Vikings turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And here we are almost through three quarters of play and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, it's a pass first league. That is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to pass the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And it's second down. Cousins. Open man left side. That's the tight end Herndon. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. And he used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. He couldn't get rid of it. He winds up losing a yard. It's second down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. Here's Cousins. Setting up the screen for Cook. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. 35 yards that time on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They'll run on first down. Cottrell, he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Second and eight coming up. They'll keep it on the ground. Cottrell. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there. Gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now is the go time? I think now is the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get them about five yards. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. 
if nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Cottrell. And he'll get two or three out of that one as that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Complete to Bryant. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's picking up play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You can see them trying to recover. They've been worked out offensively. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Running out of the gun with White. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. adjustment to be more aggressive you gotta wrap that football up yeah it always amazes me that people don't understand that well because you're going to come in as a defense the first guy makes the tackle you try and stand up the ball carrier and here come the rest of the guys trying to knock the ball out so cousins and the vikings down 10-7 a minute 36 to go the late fumble gives him unexpected new life as they come up first down satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Well, Charles... From 
SoFi Stadium. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Quarterback Matthew Stafford bringing out the L.A. offense. And Stafford, of course, all those years in Detroit and now in his first season with Los Angeles. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup, love his moxie. One of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor. Gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But he did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss. And despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, He's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. First carry now for the Memphis man, Daryl Henderson. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. To throw is Stafford. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And CD, defensively, you're going against a hot quarterback coming off a three touchdown game in their victory a week ago. But what's the big key for them to try to slow him down? You yeah, ask all the tough questions, don't you, partner? Because with this guy, if you blitz him, he takes advantage of that man coverage and burns you. But if you bring on those extra DBs, he sits back there and does what he wants. To me, it's going to be those DBs. When they catch the ball, big time tackles, really put it on those receivers. Now the first carry for Cam Akers. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When people talk about plays being blown up, that's exactly what they're talking about. That's exhibit A for physical play. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Stafford going to give this to Akers. Gets past one man. And he's got this down to the 35. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that there might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage in their clearing space. And this ball incomplete. Uh, looked very much to be a catchable ball. He could not hang on. Second down coming up. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Stafford. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. Third down, Stafford. Throw right side, going to be taken in by Henderson. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. That's a letdown defensively because they have them stacked up third and long, and you know their thought process had to be. Just make the tackle in front of the sticks and force the three. Instead, they allowed him room to run, and now they're facing first and goal, looking to regroup. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways call this penalties. Second down and goal, Stafford. That's taken in by Henderson. Touchdown, Rams! Daryl Henderson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Rams take it right down and score on the opening drive. You'd have to imagine for 
team that's lost three straight games, scoring first in this first quarter has to feel pretty good. It has to feel great for them, and also it's a nice signal to the rest of the team, because we talk about complimentary football all the time. So they've now signaled to the defense, now signaled to the kicking game, hey, we're here to play in this one. We're going to do our part. Let's see if you guys will do the exact same, and we can break this losing streak. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And it's now a 7 0 game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here's Khalif Raymond to return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And here comes the New York Lion offense here in 2021, led by their quarterback in his first season in Detroit after five in L.A., Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl, and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Now a first down throw, gone. Bryant with a catch right side. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Now Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown. should be a long way to go you think to yourself stick with the game plan all the things you worked on in practice but you have some teams that when they get down their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back and let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series we're going to get about three here out of this first down run and that'll bring up second and seven. Second and seven Goff now to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He said, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, it comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second down and seven. Now a play fake and it's gone. And now Miller hit and he fumbles. And now the Rams have got it. Go Field to the 46 yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring and free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. They'll run with Henderson here to begin the drive. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. It shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Levi Onwazurike in there to drop him, and that will go in the books as the first sack of his young NFL career. Congratulations, young man. So now Stafford and the Rams after the sack, and they're staring up at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down low. 
Bucks move. Charles Harris providing a little deja vu back to back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. Pulled in at the 24. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And the Lions will take over. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And last time, the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line so they thought they were in striking distance, and to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? That was good, tough running right up the middle, and if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Right back to him on first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. If they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth. <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. Second and ten. Here's Goff. Looking metal, and it's incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Seibert's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? Go wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. And we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. On 
First down, Stafford here. Stays on his feet. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Stafford. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Here's second and ten. Now Stafford. Over the middle and complete to the tight end, Higby. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. The coverage unit out there thinking pass on third and three. To the air again, Stafford. And Woods has it, good play. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they get five there on third and two. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Seconds to go in the half. Here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. Gay's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So a nice kick here as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. And a good return up past the 30, but was it aided by an illegal block or a hold? Let's see. Hang on here. They declined that. So the yardage will stand. There has to be confusion coming from the bench to the field about what their intentions are because you guarantee they want the penalty. Turned out that big yardage gained against them. Instead, they turned down the penalty and the yardage stand. The second half upon us sooner than we bargained for. Week seven, second half, let's do it. Okay, Lions football to start the second half and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. And takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it to 26. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Detroit. Jamal Williams, his second touchdown on the season. And the Lions are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well called, well blocked, and then he just made a great play. That was an athlete going a long way. Yeah, how about the suddenness, too, of just getting there and taking off and going for the defensive guys? Plays like that really hurt. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. Their halftime lead now evaporated. We're back to level following that touchdown a moment ago. And that shouldn't change the mindset a whole lot from an offensive perspective because they already knew this was going to be a hard-fought game. Now they just need to go out, execute their game, and a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked by Jeff Okuda, and he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. So now it appears they're going to accept the penalty, which means take away the interception. Also means keep your defense on the field. Don't understand this one one bit. Meanwhile, 
Now Stafford's throw is complete into the hands of Higby. And he's got this down to the 35. With that grab, he now sits at 200 for his career, and maybe more importantly, a first down. Throwing a Stafford. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll bring up a second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Touchdown! Cooper Cup, his fourth touchdown of the year. And the Rams have taken the lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. Just a four-play drive that time. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Khalif Raymond now. And they'll get him down inside the 30 up to 27. So here come the Lions now. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on it, and they pick up a first down. Off play action, here's gone. Finding a safety valve here, that's complete. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. They'll run it with Williams. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Jamal Williams, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Lions are an extra point away from tying this thing up. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. It certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be in the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And he gets it to go, and we're all even. 17 apiece. Five plays there on that drive. And it was Jamal Williams who ended things with a touchdown run.
17-17 the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. This is taken just shy of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Going right back to Akers, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, that's almost a tendency break. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. a play he's going to remember. The first sack of his NFL career. The following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. That'll be caught. It's cup. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun to give to Henderson. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Trey Flowers, the former Arkansas Razorback, in there to get him. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football, and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass. It's equally important to know when to throw the football away, too. 46 yards on the ground for him so far. But it looks like they caught him off guard on second and very long by running the football. All right, we always talk about tendency breakers and counters and doing things opposite the green, and that worked very well for him. Picked up really nice yardage, but they still have a lot of work to do on him. Now he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Levi Onwazurike in there to record the second sack of his young NFL career. This one no doubt important for Matt Gay. This to break our fourth quarter time. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. What a tough spot to miss a kick. Just an absolute letdown. Look, they got themselves in the field goal range. Gave them a chance to take the lead. They come up empty, and now you wonder will their offense ever see the football again? Yeah, because on the other side, one through the post, and this thing could be over. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. Trail. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. We call a lot of gains, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, yeah, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. And this is going to be intercepted. He's picked off in his own 47. And he will bring it back. It's a Return for the Rams touchdown. In a tie game fourth quarter, that's about as big of a defensive play as you could possibly make. And it didn't happen.
happened by accident. That was that was scouting right there. They've seen things that have happened before. They knew in certain situations type of plays they like to run. Read it and were able to go after the football, get it, and take it into the end zone for a touchdown for themselves. Day is on for the point after. And they will take a seven-point lead now. Getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This taken in at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here's Goff and the Lions. Down 24-17. 2 11 to go. And the missed field goal gives them new life as they come up in a one-score game on first and ten. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's White. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. St. Brown on the catch. And they're trying to line up quickly here. Goff urging them on. Now it's gone. Let's take it in, complete to Reynolds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Golf. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. The Lions need to move. They're hustling to the line now. Golf now to throw. That's complete to White. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Left. 
So it all rests now on the right foot of the kicker, Matt Gay. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So it all rests now on the right foot of the kicker, Matt Gay. This from 55 yards out. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past... So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Raymond now on the return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. First throw in overtime for goal. Throw caught by Raymond. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Going deep here for Bryant. And that is in good play. Normally being a big body receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. To throw again on second down. Goff escaping the pressure right. And he'll just get rid of it. So third down coming up. But Charles, I guess the question for me, where does four down territory begin possibly? I guess for me it begins if you have fourth and five or less. Because you got to understand your team and know what your play calls are. What do you have that you think you're confident that you can pick up that type of yardage? It might be fourth and three for some teams, but I think anything under fourth and five, they'll think about going for it. Well done by the defense. They did their job here in overtime. Boy, did they ever, because now it's fourth and really long. So if you do decide to go for it, people think you might be a little bit on the nut side, don't they? But guess what? If I did decide to go for it, I'd call something deep. I'd throw a deep pass and hope that the defense didn't remember to just knock it down. If they intercept it, it's almost like a great punt. It helps out your defense with field position. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. Time for Stafford. And this is taken in by the tight end, Bryson Hopkins. He's at the 50, 30, the 20. And he almost made it, but just short. Finally out of bounds, right down on the goal line. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. The drive starts with a completion left side. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 10-yard line. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. What they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And he'll get the 
this one up to about his 14. Out of the gun, they give to Henderson. Henderson, a first down and more. And down to the 16-yard line. It's a big place in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game, loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. From the red zone now, Stafford. A quick pass to Cup. And the Rams are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Now a play fake it at Stafford. And this will be caught. Touchdown. They needed overtime to get it done, but put this one in the win column. So the game-winning touchdown came through the air in overtime. Four quarters wasn't enough. We were treated to a really good one, weren't we, Parker? That we were, and I just love being able to be witness to a game like this all the way through. Who's going to win it? What, we're getting overtime? Great for us. A lot of tension on the field. Very tough. Not surprising. 